Hi there! So here is the iQ12, the phone that truly deserves your attention. Now it was launched on 13 December, wow that's almost been a month and we were the lucky few who were there at the launch event. Now I've been using this phone ever since and I have one word to say, incredible. The fastest chipset in the market, Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So performance obviously is next level. However, there are some things that technically are top notch on paper but aren't the best when it comes to practical use. Let me share everything in detail, the good, the not so good, so you can decide if you should buy the iQ12 or not. Let's start with the build and design. So the unit we have is the alpha black color, which personally I prefer over the legend white. The back is made of glass and the black variant comes with this matte finish, so no fingerprint or smudges. The side frame is made of metal, which reminds me of my iPhone 14 Pro Max, which when I use without a cover is almost impossible to keep clean. Just like the iPhone, you can spot the antenna bars here. Now sometimes I feel it's a little uncomfortable to hold it for a long time as the metal sinks into your palm. But the simplest solution is to use the provided cover. In fact, you won't have to worry about fingerprints either. Of course, you can get amazing third-party covers as well, but the provided cover too is of really good quality. Also, I must add that the iQ12 is one of the most premium phones I've held in a while. Just 8.1 mm thin and weighs under 200 grams, 195 to be precise. Triple camera setup, 50 megapixel primary, 64 megapixel periscope and 50 megapixel ultrawide. It can't get better than this. Above that, it also supports 100x zoom. Gimmick or useful? We'll find out further. Two stereo speakers, one on the top and one at the bottom. Also here is the microphone, USB-C port, a SIM tray that can house dual nano SIM cards. Sadly, there's no support for SD card expansion. By the way, there's also an IR blaster on the top, which can be really handy to control your home devices like ACs, TVs and more. It comes with IP64 rating, so it's dust and splash resistant, which is good, but I would say keep it away from liquid as far as possible. Better safe than sorry. Coming to the display. So this is a 6.78 inch AMOLED display with a resolution of 2800 by 1260 pixels. Now, this is an LTPO display. For those who don't know, it's a tech used in OLED displays that allows your screen to operate at variable refresh rates. It drastically reduces battery consumption than standard OLED displays. The color reproduction is absolutely brilliant. Super vibrant and punchy. 144 Hz adaptive refresh rate, which is a treat to the eyes. Ultra smooth animations. Trust me, even after a month of use, haven't noticed any lag or drop frames ever. Absolutely amazing. Now, IQ claims 1800 nits of peak brightness. And yes, it shows. Even under direct sunlight, the display is clearly visible. Right on the top is the punch hole, housing the 16 megapixel selfie camera. In display fingerprint scanner on the iQ12, it's quite fast and very responsive. As always, I wish it was placed a little higher. I think that's been my pet peeve all 2023. A tad higher would have been more ergonomic for use. Especially when you're unlocking with one hand, it seems like the phone will fall from your hand. But anyway, maybe that's just me. Then watching movies and TV shows is a delight on the iQ12. With super slim bezels, the content goes edge to edge and looks amazing. It comes with Widevine L1 certification, so content will play from Netflix and Prime videos at full resolution. We also played 4K YouTube videos and it played at full 4K flawlessly. No lag at all. Then thanks to HDR support, the content pops, looking jaw-dropping gorgeous. So the iQ12 comes with dual stereo speakers. Time for a quick demo. Alright, firstly, it's loud. Very, very clear audio. Trust me, very rarely do we find phones where the audio sounds so good. And with these dual stereo speakers, action scenes become so much more immersive. Super fun experience. Truly impressive audio fidelity without a doubt. Coming to the OS. So it's running Android 14 out of the box with Fun Touch 14. 
Now Aiku promises three years of Android update and four years of security patches. Just brilliant. The launcher now is very well optimized for performance with almost no bloatware. Packed with tons of features as you start digging in, like you can switch the resolution down to full HD, frankly looks just the same to me. Now, this won't really affect your viewing experience, but will definitely improve battery life. Then you can enable MEMC, which is a feature we usually see on smart TVs, making videos buttery smooth. However, keep this feature off while watching a movie. Coming to the performance. So, the iQ12 is the first smartphone with the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset and it's supposed to be 30% faster and 20% more efficient compared to Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Now, if you're coming from a flagship device, you probably won't even notice a difference in day-to-day -day use. The benefit will probably be more in long term. But as they say in Mumbai, ekdam tagdi performance hai. You can't get better than this. The variant we have came with 16 GB LPDDR5X RAM. Yes, you heard me right, 16 GB RAM. And that's the RAM I have on my laptop where I edit professional 4K videos. And of course, virtual RAM support of 16 GB giving you 32 GB RAM. Kuch bhi? Kuch bhi? I mean, it sounds unbelievable, but it's true. So launching apps and multitasking are something which will be almost instant. In fact, all my recently used apps are still in memory thanks to that abundance of memory. When it comes to benchmarks, we knew it would break all records, but I was just gobsmacked. Antutu scored a whopping 21,70,000. I mean, we can't even fathom such numbers for Antutu scores. 512GB storage with storage type 4.0, and we ran the test for that as well, and we got 3,714 MB read and 3,312 MB write. I told you, crazy numbers. CPU stress test is overall all green and even after being so powerful, there was barely any throttling observed. Super. Then we also played BGMI and what an amazing experience it was. I mean, it's exactly how you would expect from a flagship phone. Lag is probably an unknown word in this universe. It just flows. Played at 90 FPS without any hiccups. Oh, by the way, don't forget to enable the very loved monster mode taking the experience to the next level. If gaming is your thing, the iQ12 is probably the best bet for you. Coming to the battery. So it comes with a 5000 mAh battery that would easily last me a full day and sometimes I had 20 to 30 percent remaining and that too with 144 Hz refresh rate. So that's amazing. But I couldn't stop there. You also get a 120 watt charger in the box that charges the phone from 0 to 100 in under 20 minutes. Frankly, I have never charged this phone for more than 10 or 12 minutes, considering the battery was never zero. Also, IQ claims 80% battery capacity even after 1600 charge cycles. If you charge your phone every day and my math is correct, 1600 cycles is more than 4 years. I mean, aur kya chahiye aapko? But now, let's come to the most important part of a smartphone, the camera. So three rear cameras and all are solid ones. Here are some shots taken with the rear 50 megapixel camera. I must say, I could make sure that each snap is just perfect. The colors look absolutely stunning. It nails everything to perfection. Here are some taken at night. I mean, you all know how hard it is to get night shots. And trust me, these are all taken handheld. Check out the clarity and the detail they capture. They'll surely make your jaw drop. Then thanks to the 64 megapixel periscope, you can shoot 3x optical magnification with up to 10x lossless zoom. Now here are some shots taken at 100x zoom. Now this is a hit or a miss. Some of the shots are decent, while some of the shots are just like paintings. So you can choose to decide when you want to use 100x, but overall the 10x images are going to be pretty good. Here are some portrait shots and I can tell you they just stand out so well. It looks like an image taken from a DSLR. We even got super moon mode and we captured some moon shots. It's extremely hard to hold still. So my advice would be to use a tripod in this scenario. The iQ12 supports 8K 30fps recording, 4K 60fps as well. However, when you enable ultra stabilization, the resolution will drop to just 1080p. With standard stabilization, you can get 4K and I must say, the video quality is pretty good. Check that out.
Now here are some images taken with the 16 megapixel selfie camera, really wide angle, amazing skin tones, they are just perfect images for selfies. Check that out. Hi there. So here's a video recording from the front camera of the iQ12. Now this is a full HD 30fps video recorded handheld. Sadly and surprisingly there is no 4K video recording here. Which is kind of surprising for a 50,000 rupee phone. But the stability and the quality is really good. Also the audio that you're hearing right now is being recorded from the mics of the phone. Alright, final thoughts. So, iQ goes full throttle with their 12 series. However, if I had to nitpick, I'm really surprised to see why the front camera doesn't support 4K video recording. I mean, that's something we're seeing in phones even cheaper than this. Might be a problem for some, but still, looking at the rest of the specs and the experience, I don't see that as a deal breaker. If you're looking for a flagship phone under 50,000, the iQ12 is probably the best you can get. I mean, there is nothing else in comparison. It takes everything that you need. Available in two variants and two colors, Going with the higher variant is obviously a better option. Still, make your pick. I'll share the links of all below in the description. If you'd like to buy one, this one is definitely worth checking out. So I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, cheers.